start. Two, one. The United States spent some $288 billion to reach the moon back in 1969, inflation adjusted. Now, China has found something, and the USA is seething that it didn't find it first. For decades, powerhouse governments have been locking horns in the space race. Once they had landed on the moon, the focus turned to Mars, and now it's all about harboring life on another planet. The USA and Russia's space race is well documented. But did you know that China runs ongoing lunar projects as well? Just recently, they found something strange, something thought-provoking on the dark side of the moon, and it has sent the space world into a tailspin. After World War II drew to a close, the planet's two greatest political powers, capitalist America and the communist Soviet Union, pitted against each other in what became known as the Cold War. But at the same time, another battle was taking place, one that captured our attention and had us glued to our TV screens, the space race. Each government sought to prove the superiority of its technology by venturing out into the unknown by putting equipment, life, and finally man into space. Whichever nation could do that would reap the rewards of a globally enhanced reputation. Through the mid to late 1900s, the milestones began to fall like dominoes, with both nations trying to outdo one another. On October 4th, 1957, the Soviets launched Sputnik, the world's first artificial satellite and, officially, the first man-made object to be placed into Earth's orbit. In 1958, the US launched a satellite of its own, Explorer 1. A year later, in 1959, the Soviet space program took another leap forward when it launched Luna 2, the first space probe to make it to the moon. Two more years passed before the Soviets retaliated again with a move that would deem them temporarily superior. Cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first person to orbit Earth in April of 1961, strapped into the small capsule-like spacecraft called Vostok 1. John Glenn was America's answer to Yuri Gagarin orbiting Earth himself 10 months later. By the end of 1962, the U.S. government had laid out the foundations for NASA's lunar landing program. It was called Project Apollo, and when all was said and done, man would set foot on the moon. From 61 to 64, NASA's budget increased almost 500 percent. The money was flowing in, and on July 16, 1969, that money resulted in a truly historic day, when Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins set off on the Apollo 11 space mission. It would prove to be the inaugural lunar landing, with Armstrong the first astronaut to set foot on the moon four days after liftoff. That's when he uttered those infamous words. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The Apollo program's total cost was about $25.4 billion, equivalent to around $152 billion in today's dollars. That money passed around in all directions, paying engineering giants like Boeing, who made the Saturn V rocket, and established brands like Velcro, whose fasteners kept things from flying all over the place when gravity faded away. So that's the space race in a nutshell, throughout which the Soviets and the USA continuously drew in the attention, not only of the aerospace and science communities, but of the entire public world. Fast forward to now, in 2020, over 50 years since the Apollo 11 astronauts first walked on the moon, and the rest of the world is throwing their intergalactic hats into the ring. In 2018 alone, 18 countries spent at least $200 million on space-related activities, covering everything from satellites to exploration, proof that global investment in space is blasting off again. But there's one nation whose influence now competes with the dominant duo, whose spending, resources, and intent to succeed in the final frontier continues to build, yup, China. The Eastern powerhouse has increased its space spending 349% over 15 years, and that doesn't even include the private sector. On January 3rd of 2019, China became the first country in the world to successfully land a spacecraft on the far side of the moon. Landing on the dark side of the moon is no easy task. There's an inability to maintain radio contact with the space station due to the magnetic force of the giant mass. The sheer size of the moon acts as a signal barrier, blocking any communication between Earth and any spacecraft on the opposite side. Getting to the far side was a significant aerospace breakthrough, but it was what they discovered there that piqued immediate international interest. Hidden within a crater, China's U-22 rover spotted a peculiar, greenish, gel-like substance. At least, it looked like gel. It was colored differently compared to its surroundings and contained a handful of bright spots. Here, see for yourself. Theories quickly surfaced. Was it melted rock? Proof of water? 
a new liquid material. Appearance is one thing, but whether its texture resembled a gel was unclear. The rover was unmanned, so the China National Space Administration had no choice but to rely on the images captured by the main camera for analysis. According to one lunar science expert, Clive Neal from the University of Notre Dame, the mysterious material closely resembled a sample of impact glass found during the Apollo 17 mission way back in 1972. Lunar impact glasses are formed when the moon's crust melts during an impact event like an asteroid strike, and subsequently solidifies as a glass-like crystal substance, melting and reforming essentially. So while it may appear as a gel, according to experts like Neil, the images can be deceiving. And the shimmer comes not from a gel or liquid, but from its transparent glass-like composition. The U-22 rover, the thought-provoking photos, and the entire far side of the moon experience is all part of China's Chang'e 4 mission. Until this mission, satellites and astronauts had flown by and made visual observations from afar, but nothing had officially managed to touch down on its dark side surface. Make no mistake, rocketing a piece of new technology up and out of the Earth's atmosphere and landing it on the moon is going to cost you more than a pretty penny. We know that the total cost of Project Apollo from 1960 to 1973 was $25.4 billion, but how'd that number climb so high? A significant proportion of the funds went to the vessels themselves. Apollo 11 alone cost $355 million. The Saturn V rocket that launched astronauts to the moon was $185 million. And the lunar module, the piece of equipment that actually landed on the moon, which NASA dubbed the Eagle, cost $40 million itself. Throw in astronaut salaries in excess of $100,000 per year and it's easy to see how the spending accumulates. Space travel is not cheap, at least not right now. As the industry diversifies from government organizations, and as new companies like Elon Musk's SpaceX aim to reduce space transportation costs to enable the colonization of Mars, we very well could be seeing affordable intergalactic flights in the not-too-distant future. The prices are already diminishing. Between 1970 and 2000, the cost to launch a kilogram averaged at $18,500. For the SpaceX Falcon 9, the rocket that was used to access the International Space Station, the comparative cost is just $2,720 per kilogram, an 85% discount on traditional NASA costs. Who knows? Before too long, we might be able to book a return flight to the moon for our next vacation. SpaceX is currently continuing development of its Starship, which will be designed to travel through the solar system and carry up to 100 passengers sometime this decade, according to Musk. How much would you pay for an interview? stellar holiday? Let us know in the comments down below. Anyway, thoughts of pina coladas on Jupiter aside, let's rewind for a second. China's lunar probe. What exactly was it doing up there? It actually had a number of different purposes, with each piece of built-in equipment responsible for studying a particular target. The Lunar Dust Analyzer recorded the physical characteristics of dust. The VLF, or Very Low Frequency Radio Interferometer, aided with plans for putting a radio observatory on the moon and the electric field analyzer measured the magnitude of the electric field. The Chang'e 4 lunar probe is also a huge step up from its predecessor, which lacked the ability to work during the night. Keep in mind that day and night on the moon last for the equivalent of 14 days each. According to Wu Yanhua, deputy director of the entire project, the total cost of the mission was, quote, not much. Certainly less than India's ongoing Chandrayaan-2 mission, which has already cost about $141 million. The costs of getting to the moon have been substantial for the US, Russia, and China. However, most of the money invested over the last 70 years has been used to develop technology. Now that we have it, taking humans one step further and landing on Mars doesn't seem so overly far-fetched. Mars won a Dutch organization that aims to establish a permanent human colony on Mars, estimates that the cost of bringing the first four people to Mars at $6 billion. $450 million of that is set aside for the first unmanned Mars lander mission, $425 for the communications satellite, $900 for the first rover mission, and $1.25 billion for sending the first human crew on the 150-plus day trip to our neighboring planet. If Mars One or SpaceX or NASA or the CNSA or any other space company does colonize Mars or the Moon or both, then the potential income is astronomical. Pun intended. New minerals, which could hypothetically be deemed more valuable than gold or diamonds, may be abundant. 
The potential revenue from commercializing interspace travel would be in the trillions, especially if the first company can secure a monopoly. In fact, NASA is very close to finding another inhabitable, water-abundant planet. In January of 2020, NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, TESS for short, pinpointed its first Earth-sized planet in a habitable zone. What that means is that there's another potentially livable planet that sits within an area where conditions could allow for water on the surface. And if TESS is proven correct, then what? What else could we find now that global powerhouse nations are landing in new places? Could there be more to China's gel-like substance that they're not telling us? Could we be jetting out of Earth's atmosphere on a Boeing 747 Space Edition sooner than we think? We may not have the answers to the questions right now, but with billions of dollars thrown against the wall to see what sticks, it's only a matter of time. Would you be willing to be one of the first to colonize Mars? How much would you need to be paid to leave your Earth life behind? Let us know. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.